Hello everybody. Hope you are safe at home with your loved ones, your family members. I would like to welcome you to chapter 39 today, Speech and Language Decider. In this chapter, we are discussing about how the speech and language play very important role in our life. And because of the lack of speech and language, how different difficult situation individual has to face. Let's begin the discussion of speech and language disorder. Speech and language disorder involves difficulty in speaking, understanding, and reading or writing. It can occur at it any age, it can occur at any age, it's not the age-specific disorder. Not to be confused with inability to understand another language. It's not about the language gap. It's not about how you don't understand others' language. It's about how you cannot understand your own language. It's about how a person cannot verbalize the word, how the person cannot understand, perceive what other people are telling him or her. This is all about the speech and language disorder. The fundamental causes of speech and language disorder involves genetic problem. Genetic problems are the problems which people inherit from their parents or grandparents or the parents of the both side, mom, mother side or the father side. And it is non-modifiable problem. Another is acquired brain injury, ABI. Acquired brain injury because of certain accident or trauma, people had a head injury and head injury involves the brain injury. Accident, infection, drug abuse, and stroke. These are the major uh, causes of brain injury. And because of those brain injury, people have difficulty in using the words, communicating with others, understanding other people. So both the language and, the language and speech disorder involves with these accidents, disease, certain disease process in the body. Also, people cannot have a good language and speech skills, like in the chronic phase of dementia and Alzheimer's disease, people have difficulty in speaking, people have difficulty in understanding others. Hearing loss, when we have the loss of the sense or organs like hearing ability, people cannot hear what other people are telling them. That's why their speech and language becomes impaired. It becomes dysfunctional. It's not functioning well as usual. And life becomes very difficult. And brain tumor, certain time, there is a brain tumor. Some, sometimes it is a cancerous and sometimes it is a non-cancerous, malignant, and another is benign tumor. So because of the brain tumor, people have a difficulty in speech and language. Their brain is not uh, getting the nerve impulses from the sense organ because the tumor blocks the impulse way to the brain central nervous system and they will have a speech and language disorder. Problem in speaking and problem in understanding. Problem with the speech. Sometimes the people have the problem in the speech. They cannot verbalize what they intend to say. They cannot express their ideas. Similarly, we have a new terminology or the new word to understand aphasia. Aphasia, aphasia is a parcel or the total loss of speech. It is 
either the partial or the total lo loss of speech. People cannot speak any word, any verbalization. Vocalization does not take place. Language is killed caused by the brain injury. Because of the acute brain injury, because of the car accident, because of the falling from the stairs, falling from the roof, people have a brain injury. And because of this brain injury, they have lost the parcel or the total speech ability of the brain. And that, that is called aphasia. Common causes are a stroke. When people have a cerebrovascular accident or the stroke, CVA means cerebrovascular accident. It is the, it is another name for this is a stroke. When they have a stroke, when they have a head injury, head injury and the brain tumors. As we already discussed, there are two types of tumors developing the brain. One is malignant tumor and one is benign tumor. This type of tumor also uh, makes the speech and language dysfunctional. There are three types of aphasia. Actually, the difficulty speaking, the failure of the speech and language, there are three types of aphasia. Receptive aphasia, receptive means the process of receiving something. When somebody tells some, something, you receive it. You get it in the mind. The mind, the hear, the, your ear process the, the, the vibration and it goes to the mind and you process the information and you receive the idea what the person is intending to tell you. Or expressive aphasia. This expressive aphasia is people's inability to express what they want actually. And the third type of it, some people have both expressive and receptive aphasia. Some people are having the chronic uh, aphasia of expression and reception. And so once again, there are three types of aphasia. Aphasia is a total or the partial loss of the language skill caused by the brain injury. And we have the three types of aphasia, receptive aphasia. This aphasia is what other people speak, talk about, we cannot understand, people cannot understand, our client cannot understand. Expressive aphasia is the person's ability to verbalize, vocalize the idea in the language form. It is dysfunctional and some people, they have the both type of uh, aphasia. The client with aphasia has many emotional needs. See, the client with aphasia has many emotional needs. The client has a feelings of loneliness. Let's begin from the receptive aphasia. Once again, receptive goes with the receiving. Receiving, you are receiving something. Your client is receiving what you are speaking. But, but because of the receptive aphasia, people cannot understand what others are telling. Difficulty understanding language, both spoken language and written language. See, even the written language has a difficulty understanding. Difficulty understanding both the written and the spoken language. Difficulty understanding what is said or read. Client cannot understand their own words. It's a difficulty. Speech is mixed up with the muddled. Muddled means the jumbled way of the words, words mixed together becomes muddled. It is mixed together. It doesn't give any clear meaning what the person tells. Client make up or use wrong words. See, the selection of the word becomes impaired. Person cannot choose good words, appropriate words to mean something, to indicate something. That's the problem with selecting the words, but are not aware of their mistake. That's the, that's the very, very uh, big thing. They cannot use proper word in the proper situation. And on the top of that, they do not know that they are making the mistake. And at this time, our role as a support worker is not to blame the person, 
So whom to blame? Nobody to blame. This is a disease process. That's why when a healthy person have a disease condition, people have this type of um, problem. In the receptive aphasia, people cannot use proper words in the proper situation to mean something, to indicate something. For example, a person, 90 years old client living in a, in, in a, in a long-term care home wants to drink water, but the person is trailing something to get water but the person is not being able to use the proper word water, give me water. And the person is speaking, speaking some mixed type of verbal um, condition, like mixed up or the muddled words. And the person is being dehydrated a lot of times because the person cannot use the word because of the receptive and because of the receptive aphasia or expressive aphasia. Generally, when people have to express and they cannot express, that goes expressive aphasia. Expressive aphasia, difficulty speaking and writing, can understand spoken and written words, but, can, but their speech is jumbled. It is jumbled. It is mixed up with the different words or the slurred and difficult to understand. Their speech is a slurred speech or the jumbled of the different words, which is very difficult to understand. It is not easy for us to understand. We support worker when we are working with these people having expressive aphasia. We don't understand what they are telling. We have to know what they are telling. If they are asking for water, we have to give them water. We have to be very, very careful about this because the language is totally failing there. They cannot speak what they want. And think one thing, but say another. They might think one thing, but they cannot say the thing they think. They cannot think of the right word or put the right sound. In the word, a word comes with a particular sound and they use the word, maybe they using the different sound, means there is a, there is a lack of coordination between the word and the sound it represents. That's why we, with the listener, we, we fail to understand what they intend to say. And it together to form words and the sentence. So because of the jumbled words, we cannot understand what they are telling in a, in a simpler way. But by understanding the, the context, we have to understand. We support workers' duties to understand what they say. Even if the verbal communication does not take place, there are nonverbal communicating cues. We have to understand that. If they have a facial grimacing, if their face is not happy, we have to figure out, we have to ask if they have a pain. And we have to notify the nurse that my client in room number 302, for example, having pain, the client is displaying some facial grimacing. We have to call the nurse and the nurse goes there and do the pain assessment and gives the medication for that. This is how we are working as a team member, as a support worker in the facility, in the community. Even if client has an expressive aphasia, client cannot verbalize what he or she wants to say us. We don't understand what the client says us, Again, at the same time, the story does not end here. There are so many nonverbal cues, nonverbal communication. That is the biggest part. And one thing, let me tell you today, verbal communication gives only 10% of communication uh, successfully. And nonverbal communication, it gives you the communicating, uh, the idea 50 to 60%. Therefore, we are not much worried about this. And the next thing may leave out connecting the word. It's their condition. 
they may leave out connecting the word. They are trying to connect the words in between to make a meaningful sentence, but they fail to do it. It's very aware of their mistakes because they can understand what they are saying. It is different in the aware of their mistake because they can understand what they are saying, but they cannot make you understand what they are saying. Their communication becomes completely abnormal, unusual for us to understand. And this type of expressive aphasia, it leads to frustration or depression. Depression to you or the client, to the client. Because why does the client feel frustrated Because can, or depressed? Because the client knows that he or she is not being able to communicate properly. This lack of communication leads to frustration and depression, which are both are the real causes of further mental health issues. Because frustration increases the stress level, depression itself is the disease process. When people are depressed, depression is one of the most common mental health issue, mental health disease. So, so to sum up, even if people cannot express the idea, we support worker have to develop the ability to know what they are trying to say. We have to communicate with them even using nonverbal cues. Now the third type of combination of expressive aphasia and receptive aphasia. Expressive receptive aphasia in, in, in this situation what happens? Difficulty speaking and understanding language. Both happens. Expression, difficulty in expressing idea, difficulty in understanding others idea. Both thing happens here. Difficulty speaking and understanding others' language. Some client can only say yes or no because they cannot understand, they cannot use other words there appropriately and make sounds such as dada. It's like a six months old baby speaking, but do not humiliate them by telling them baby. They are in the advanced age and the disease process has made them, lead them to that situation. We cannot humiliate, we cannot um, make joke of what they say. We have to understand this is the disease process. It is not their personal mistake. Other clients with expressive receptive aphasia may have lost all speech. It's a complete loss of the speech and the language skill. See here, the complete language skill has failed. People, on the one hand, they cannot understand what other people are telling them. And on the other hand, they cannot express the idea they want to. This is a complete loss of verbal communication. And what is the another way to understand our clients? There are even more important ways, which are nonverbal communication, nonverbal cues, understanding the facial, physical gesture and posture, which is bigger part of communication. Let's go to apraxia. Apraxia is a condition in which Speech cannot correctly use the speech muscle to produce understandable speech. See, the client's musculoskeletal disorder causes that apraxia. The client with apraxia of speech cannot correctly use the speech muscle. It's the muscle in the, in the face. While speaking the language, the facial muscle is movement of the facial muscle is impaired to produce understandable speech. The client understands speech and knows what to say, but the brain cannot coordinate the speech muscle. There is 
the whole central nervous system is coordinating all our brain all our muscles and bone client understand what he or she wants to say but the brain central nervous system the brain here means the central nervous system the brain cannot coordinate the speech muscle see the speech muscle in the face around the the mouth make no words leap jaw or tongue movement so in the apraxia what happens is the accessory muscle of our mouth like the leap jaw and tongue they fail to coordinate and produce the meaningful sound that is called language this is how the client with the diagnosis of apraxia fails to communicate with the healthcare professional and still we are we are hopeful that we can understand their nonverbal communication nonverbal cues by looking their facial and facial gest facial and physical gesture and posture and we assist them as per needed apraxia is caused by the damage to the motor speech area in the brain in the brain there is a motor speech area it is the coordinating part of the brain when people have certain accident or injury because of the 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 development of new tissue there because of the development of cancerous tumor or non cancerous tumor motor vehicle accident because of the uh, stroke or cerebrovascular accident or because of the the fall from the stair or the top um, the rooftop because of those those type of damage to the motor speech area in the brain it totally or partially uh, impairs makes the language use dysfunctional and the result is difficult to understand other speech is usually very slow people have a slow speech it's a kind of slur speech inconsistent speech is coming common inconsistent the, there should be a consistency in speech the speech should be meaningful the speech should be um, appropriate use of language and sentences but the client with this disorder cannot make the good combination of appropriate words to make a meaningful sound and speech difficult to put words in the right order or find words see the difficulty it is very difficult to find the appropriate words to put them together to make a ma to make a meaningful uh, sound to find the words to make a meaningful speech or sound people cannot do it again i have to repeat you the same question what is the best idea uh, to communicate when the client had apraxia we are hopeful with non verbal cues now let us go to another word which is new to you it is called dysarthria 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 is difficulty speaking clearly people cannot speak very clearly nicely to communicate with each other which is very necessary for everyday living imagine if we cannot communicate for one day or two days how difficult it is for us to to maintain the daily activities activities of daily living what we call adls in health here it is caused by the weakness or paralysis of the muscle used for the speech see in this arthria when the paralysis occurs when the weakness is occurs in the muscle used for the speech what are the muscle used for the speech it's the leap muscle tongue etc these are the muscles we use while speaking speech common causes are cerebral palsy 
multiple sclerosis, stroke, which we call cerebrovascular accident, head injury, it is called trauma, tumor, certain new tissue development in the brain, and infection. Infection is another culprit that causes dysarthria and it makes the people dysfunctional in terms of the communication. Client may have slurred, means very, very slow. Slurred means here, slow. Client may have a slurred, slurred speech and speak in a flat or harsh nasal tones. People cannot get rid of the nasal tone. Their tones goes with the nose and the nasal tones. Problem forming words. They, they can't form the words. They cannot select the proper words spacing their words. There is a certain punctuation in the language. When the natural flow of the language, there is a natural flow of the punctuation. But they speak in such a jumbled way that the, we cannot hear what they are telling us. Speech errors are usually consistent. It is persistently they are making the speech error. They cannot communicate properly, and which is speech errors are predictable. The, we, we have to take it in a usual way. With the people having dysarthria, they will very often, most, common, most commonly, they make the uh, errors in the speech, which is predictable. You may become familiar with the client's speech. When working with these clients with this type of speech difficulties, we get used to. We start learning, understanding each other. Even if their language is not working well, we understand them by non-verbal communication, non-verbal cues, by the facial, physical gesture and posture. Now, because of this difficulty in language, using language and speaking and understanding, expressing aphasia and um, other problem, there is an emotional effect associated with that. Communication, it is very, very important for functioning and maintaining relationship with others. Imagine if we cannot communicate how can we make the friends? And how long the friendship goes there without the proper communication? That's why to maintain the relationship with other, we need to communicate. And elderly population in the long-term care homes or in the community setting of their own homes, they are not being able to communicate properly. So difficulty in communication may lead to what are the consequences of difficulties of communication? It may lead to avoiding social situation. Avoiding social situation means not going to any party, not going to any social gatherings, and not, not going to celebrate certain like birthday party with the friends and family. They don't go, they don't want to go there because they, they are emotionally detached because they, the client know that they cannot communicate properly and they may feel embarrassed when they fail to communicate. Avoiding the friends and family, elderly client when they have this type of communication problem, speech problem, they don't want to see their friends and family. Extreme stress, it leads to the extreme stress and stress is the number one reason for mental health disorder. Loss of employment. If a person has a speech and communication problem, language problem, the person no longer is working there. The person um, loses the job. Difficulties doing routine tasks, shopping, playing, paying bills. See, the routine task outside the home, you have to go for the grocery, go for the shopping, paying the bills and all other things, all the daily activities of normal living 
becomes impaired when the communication, the language, the speech become impaired. Now, so we are focusing here, uh, what are the treatment process of the speech and language disorder? And we are more focusing on how do we give care to them rather than their medical or uh, other processes. We have to focus them how we can care those people and what type of treatment is there because we are helping the client when they are undergoing the medical treatment. At the same time, we are giving them personal care when the treatment is going on. We are giving them support when the treatment for the speech, certain speech therapy might be going on, certain physiotherapy for the accessory facial muscle to ease the verbalization, vocalization. When those treatment are going on, we still are working with those clients. Therefore, we have to know the treatment of speech and language disorder. At the same time, what we can give the personal care. Some client need a speech pathologist. See, some client, they need a speech pathologist. And it is the doctor, it is the family doctor or the specialist doctor who decide what type of pathologies they need, when they need, and so on. The goal is to improve the person's ability to communicate. What is the goal of the speech pathologist? To improve the person's ability to communicate so that the person once again will have a normal way of life. The person will understand how to communicate. The, person, the person's communication will come back to normal once again. The amount of improvement possible depends on the decider, its cause and its severity. Severity means seriousness. So whether the person will improve the speech and language, whether the speech pathologist will successfully uh, able to teach the person about the use of language and uh, other speech, it depends on what is the main cause of the disease what is the disorder and what is the, the degree of seriousness, which is called severity. A speech language pathologist and other healthcare team members can help the person to improve affected speech and language skill, to improve, just to make the improvement in those areas, which area is affected to make the improve, use remaining abilities, what are the other abilities the person has, they will study about that and they encourage the person to use those remaining abilities. Restore. Once they have lost the thing, they want to restore it. Restore speech and language ability to the extent possible. As far as possible, they will do, these healthcare professional, they will work on there to make the abilities to bring them back to the normal track where they can speak, where the language, they can use the language and their speech and their language works well. Learn to other methods of communication. There are so many methods of communication and they will teach the person other method of, of communication. If the verbal communication does not help them at all, they use the nonverbal cues. Strengthen the muscle of speech. So now they, they start to strengthen the muscle and the physiotherapist works to strengthen the muscle used for the speech, like accessory muscle, like the leap and the tongue, etc. Now, communication aids. What are the communication aids? What are the accessory help for the communication? What other, not, uh, other items could help their communication? Communication boards. Boards with the picture, of, picture or words that so function or the tags. Even if they cannot verbalize, they cannot use the language, there are white boards where so many pictures the pictures and the words, they can be displayed on those boards and that picture and the words displaying on the board, they will help to communicate, help to understand. 
related to activities of daily living. Those related like giving shower or going using bathroom, there will be so many relative pictures displaying on the board. It will help to communicate. But this type of communication is a non-verbal. Communication with certain helping aids, uh, communication aids. Client points to the things her, he or she wants to express. In the difficult situation when the client cannot use the language, the client will point to the things. If the client wants to go to the washroom and the client cannot say he or she wants to go to the washroom, the client will show the picture of going washroom. This is how we get communicated. Mechanical and electron electronic devices. There are mechanical and electronic devices as the communication aids. Client touches a picture or word to the message is then voice the printed to the screen. When they use the, uh, the mechanical devices, they point the word and the word will be later on voiced and then the communication takes place by using the electronic and mechanical devices as well. And use of computer. This is the age of computer. People, even if they fail to communicate properly, there are certain use of using computer for the communication. Electronic devices use a combination of the screen reading. There is a facility of the screen reading, magnification system, making the things very larger than they appear. It's called magnifying. There are magnifying glasses that makes the image bigger than they actually are. And alternate input methods. There are certain methods which they can use in an alternate way. Like, can he speak for the user? User can he speak for there? Type in the correct words. The user can type the correct words for the communication. Identify symbols. There are so many symbols used for that uh, computer and the magnifying those symbol symbols it's easy to see them and that symbols represent the words they intend to express even if they cannot express the words the symbols they use represent the word they want to express and speech synthesizer there is a speech synthesizer when they need to say something this mechanism helps them to communicate properly. So invaluable in improving the client's quality of life. This use of computer technology, electronic devices and mechanical devices, they are invaluable. They are very, very, they are having the great value in improving the client's quality of life. So all the technology must be used for the quality of life of our clients, of human beings. This is the big concept here. Now, we are focusing our discussion here how to support and communicating with the clients, supporting and communicating with the clients. Even if they cannot use the speech and language, still we need to communicate with the clients and these are, and these are the uh, guidelines for communicating with the clients who are um, not able to use the language and the speech. Follow the care plan. This is your biggest book to follow every day before you go to the client. Check the care plan. How you begin your uh, day's work. Your care plan says that. Incorporate dips. See, these dips are very, very important guidelines for us. Incorporate these dips and follow the care plan. Use communication method that are best for your client and include clients in conversation. Use communication method. What is the communication method with the person who cannot use the language, who cannot speak with you? This is a non-verbal communication method that are the best for the client. The non-verbal may be showing them the picture, 
uh, giving them mechanical devices, electronic devices. They can point there and by using the symbol, you can understand what they want to do and what they want to mean, what they mean by that. We have to understand by that. So that is the best way your client and you can communicate. Be mindful, always be careful of your facial expression. If you are making your facial expression very, very irritating, it, it is a big communication through your face. Remember, your face is the mirror to reflect your mind. Everybody's face is a mirror. What's going on in their mind is expressed in the face. If they are mad, their face shows it, represents it. You can reflect your impatience or frustration in your face. Do not do it. This is very frustrating. You cannot do it. You cannot show the impatience or frustration while working with the client because this does not help any communication. You are showing your attitude, you are showing your anger, you are showing your frustration. That's not the professional way. That's not the professional way of working with elderly population. Be alert for the sign of the client's fatigue. The client may be very, very tired. Fatigue means tired. And you, you know, if the person is very tired, what are the symbol, sign and symptom the person displays when the person is tired? Dropping soldier, maybe one, one sign and one sign could be dropping soldier. Irritability, person is not feeling calm and quiet, person is feeling irritability, lack of interest. You are trying to show something, person is trying to see somewhere else. It's a lack of interest. Person is busy when doing something. It's the lack of interest. Decline in understanding. You try to say something or try to show a picture to the client, but the client is turning to other side and the client is speaking something else and talking to somebody near to him or her that means decline in understanding. The client does not understand what you want to say. So these are the guidelines for communication in your book. Page number 909, please let us discuss this, page number 909. So while supporting the communication with the client, we have the guidelines to follow. The guidelines in page number 909 says so many important points to remember. The first point the book mentions is minimize the distraction. When you are communicating with the client, the first thing you have to do is minimize the distraction. Take the client in a place so that the client can focus on what you are showing or telling or demonstrating, or displaying, whatever. Next thing is adjust the lighting. If the, you are taking the client in a dark room, in a dark hallway, or in the place where there is not the proper lighting, there is no eye contact with your client. Because of the lack of eye contact in Canadian culture, it is considered inappropriate communication. You are not telling the truth. It's something like that. So adjust the lighting, in, stay in front of the client and make sure that client can see you and you can see the client. Do not communicate in the darkness. That makes them scared. The third point says, give the client your full attention. If you are busy with doing something else while communicating with the clients, it is not considered appropriate. You have to focus as much as you can. You have to focus on your communication. You have to pay the full attention. You have to listen actively. It's called active listening. Or if you don't have to listen, you have to pay 100% attention to the client. 
do not perform other tasks while talking to the client. Do not uh, do other work while talking to the client. In the beginning of your work relationship, you have to maintain the therapeutic relationship. Your relationship with the client is called professional rela relationship. And in healthcare sector, this professional relationship is called therapeutic relationship, which is goal oriented. When you talk, when you are communicating, you have to determine the subject being discussed. You have to know at least what you are talking about. And check if the client's facial, eyes, face, facial and physical gesture posture is supporting with your conversation, with your discussion or not. It's your duty to determine that. And follow the client's lead. If the client is telling you something, you follow the client's lead. Do not lead the client. Rather, let the client lead you. It makes their language more and let them give them the opportunity to express more and more. That makes their conversation or communication easier for them if we follow the client's lead. Speak slowly, clearly, and in a normal tone of voice. Do not use very high pitch sound. Speak in a normal tone of voice. Do not speak in a very loud way. And do not speak in a very jumbled, complex sentences. Speak in a short and sweet, simple sentences with the low tone of voice, it will help them to understand. Give the client time to respond. When you ask something to the client, let them process the information and then let them respond what you have said them. Because if we rush there, the client will get confused. Give a pause between the sentence to allow the client enough time to think and respond to you. Do not answer any question, including your own question and those from others when they are addressed to the client. Do not use very long sentences when you are using language to them. Give them clear, short sentences with the low tone of voice. Use simple word and short sentences it is very helpful for the client. Be patient, have your patience, use positive statement, demonstrate positive attitude. Positive statements are easier to understand than the negative statement. Do not use the negative statement, which makes them more confused. Again, you can use appropriate question and paraphrasing techniques. You let them uh, process the information and give them some time to express themselves. Provide certain cues as needed. If you want to, if you want your client is having a little bit difficulty, give them certain cues so that they can utilize those cues and start communicating you. Try other communication method, like some people may write better than they speak. If they can write better than they speak, let them write. And you have to pay attention to your own facial expression and nonverbal cues. While communicating with the client, if your facial expression is frustrating, if you are not paying proper attention, to the client, your communication, even you are failed in your communication. Do not fail your communication, but make the communication with the client successful, which is biggest duty as a support worker. Thank you for your patience and please read the book with these slides and understand you have a chance to communicate with us, with me, if you don't understand anything. Thank you. Have a great time. Stay home and feel safe.
safe. Thank you.